Let's go ahead and take a look at example two. In this example, we are still asked to solve for the triangle. So we need to find the length of side A, side B, side C, as well as angle A, angle B, and angle C. Starting off, we know that the measure of A is 50 degrees. We know that the measure of C is 33 0.5 degrees, and we also know that side B is 76. The next thing we can solve for pretty easily is angle B, just like what we did before. All of the angles in the triangle have to add up to, to 180, so if I do angle A plus angle B plus angle C, This should equal to 180 degrees. If I do 50 plus 33.5, that's going to give us 83.5. Go ahead and subtract that from 180. 180 minus 83.5 is going to give us 96.5. So the measure of angle B is 96.5 degrees. We still have two more unknowns. We don't know the length of side A, nor do we know the length of side C, and we can use the law of sines in order to help us solve for both of those. The reason why we're going to be able to use the law of sines is we now know the measure of angle B. That's 96.5 degrees. So we know angle B, and we know its corresponding side, so that will allow us to solve and set up a law of sines ratio. Let's do side A first. According to the law of sines, side A divided by the sine of angle A, which is 50 degrees, would be equal to side B, which is 76, divided by the sine of angle B, which is 96.5. To solve for A, we would multiply both sides by sine 50, and we would find that A is equal to 76 times the sine of 50 degrees, all divided by the sine of 96.5 degrees. We'll solve this to two decimal places. So go to your calculator, type it in, and we would get that side A is going to be approximately 58.60. So 58.60 would be the length of side A. We can set up a similar ratio to solve for side C. The ratio of C divided by the sine of angle C should be equal to the length of side B divided by the sine of angle B to solve for C multiply both sides by sine 33.5 degrees we get 76 times the sine of 33.5 degrees divided by the sine of 96.5 degrees. We can go ahead and plug that into the calculator. And we should get 42.22. So 42.22 would be the length of side C. And we've now solved this triangle. One of the things that can often happen whenever we're trying to solve 
a triangle, when we have what's called the SSA case, SSA stands for two sides and the angle that is not in between those two sides. Okay. For example, if I look at this diagram, suppose I'm given these two sides. So I have side A, which would be known to us, side B, which would also be known to us, and I have the, one of the angles that's not in between the two. So let's suppose I have this angle here. Okay. It turns out that there's what's referred to as the ambiguous case of the law of sines. So the question boils down to, can we solve um, this triangle? In other words, is there going to be such a triangle that's going to, to exist here? Because A is shorter than H in this case, what we see is that if you have these three lengths, it's not going to be possible to form a, a triangle using those values. Okay. And whenever we have the SSA case, whether or not we're going to be able to solve for it, and whether or not the solution is going to be unique, it's going to depend upon this value H, which is the length of the altitude. H, if you use some of our old school trick stuff, H would be equal to B times sine A. So if I were to imagine dropping an altitude down, a perpendicular to the opposite side, that would create a right triangle. So I'm looking at this right triangle here. In that right triangle, the sine of A is the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. That would be H over B. I can then solve it for H by multiplying both sides by B, and we get that H is equal to B times the sine of angle A. Okay. The next chart tells us specifically what will happen depending upon the value of this number H. Okay. When A is greater than H and A is greater than B, that will produce one triangle. So looking at this case here, when do we get one triangle? Well, the answer is when A is bigger than H and A is bigger than B. We also can get one triangle when A is equal to H, and that would actually complete the triangle we just looked at a moment ago, which would be exactly one right triangle. If A is less than H and is not enough to form a right triangle. So here we have a situation where if A is ever less than H, then that side won't be long enough to attach or to connect to the other line segment that's coming out of A to form angle A, and therefore that would create no triangle. So if A is less than H, we get no triangle. And yet the last possibility is sometimes we actually get two solutions. So sometimes, depending upon the given information, it's possible to create two solutions. If A is greater than H, and A is also less than B, then there's two distinct triangles that can be formed. We can form one by connecting A to the opposite side like this, and that would form a right triangle. Or we could actually take A and swing it out instead, like this, and that would form a, a second solution. So one solution would look like this, which would be an obtuse triangle, or it's possible to form an acute solution, which would be this triangle right here. So the, the biggest takeaway and what's going to be important to us as we look through the next several examples is if the given starting information is of the form side side and the not included angle, we have to be very careful. We should always begin by calculating this value h seeing how H compares to A, and then going from there to see, and also how, also how A compares to B as well, and then seeing whether or not we get one solution, no solution, or perhaps two solutions to this uh, type of problem.